time of very promote that we present exploring the cost effectiveness of an intensive physiotherapeutic scoliosis specific <laughs> exercises program in a UK adult population. Hello everybody and thank you for having me along today. This is a continuation of the research that my colleague Jason Black first presented in Lyon two years ago, looking at the cost effectiveness of exercise therapy for adults with scoliosis. These are my disclosures. Um, adult patients with idiopathic scoliosis have been shown to present with impaired health-related quality of life. Therefore, in health systems globally, a key objective of treatment is to improve quality of life whilst maintaining cost effectiveness. <coughs> cost effectiveness of PSSEs has not been researched, and thus conclusions about whether or not there are a viable or economic alternative to surgery or bracing for healthcare systems cannot be made. In the UK, the National Health Service offers spinal fusion surgery as the only treatment for adults with idiopathic scoliosis. Um, they treat about 360 cases per year, each costing 24,853 British pounds. And the cost utility analysis, cost effective analysis, estimates the cost of treatment. It is used to inform funding decisions based on the benefit of treatment versus how much it costs. It requires extrapolation of data because it estimates the lifetime benefits of treatment. The primary outcome of cost utility analysis is the cost per quality adjusted life year, or QALY for short, otherwise known as the incremental cost effectiveness ratio, which I'll come on to a bit more in a moment. QALYs analyze both the quality and the quantity of life years where, rather morbidly, Zero equals death, and one equals perfect health. Qualies are accumulative, and thus a 0.2 quali improvement lasting for five years equals one quali for the patient. The ICER is calculated as the difference in the expected costs of intervention A compared to intervention B, divided by the difference in the expected qualies produced <coughs> by intervention A and intervention B. Generally, it is considered that the interventions costing the UK's National Health Service less than 30,000 British pounds per quali gained are deemed to be cost effective. The EQ5D is the measure preferred by the UK's National Institute of Clinical Excellence for comparing cost effectiveness. It's a descriptive um, system and it defines health related quality of life in terms of five dimensions. Mobility, self-care, usual activities, pain and discomfort, and anxiety and depression. Responses to each of these dimensions are divided into three levels. First, no problems. Second, some to moderate problems. And third, severe to extreme problems. Thus generating a total of 243 possible health states. And on the left is an example EQ5D form which can only be used with licensed permission. The aim of this study was to explore the cost effectiveness of physiotherapeutic scoliosis specific exercises for adult patients with idiopathic scoliosis using an intensive group based therapy approach. 183 consecutively recruited UK based adult patients with an average age of 38.5 years at the start of treatment attending the Scoliosis SOS clinic in London for intensive scoliobulb treatment, filled out the EQ5T5L questionnaire at five different time points. Before treatment, after treatment, a six months checkup, 12 months checkup, and 18 months post treatment checkup. The EQ5D results were then converted into qualies using assumptions about the duration of treatment effect. A linear regression model was then used to statistically analyze the results. Due to the method of data collection, consecutive nature of patient recruitment, and time limitations imposed by the three-year EQ5D5L license, 100% of participants completed the questionnaire pre-treatment, 91% immediately post-treatment, 68% at their six-month checkup, with 51% at both 12 and 18-month checkups. Before treatment, the average EQ5D score was 0.773, and immediately after treatment, this increased to an average of 0.881. 
At six months, the average was 0.862, and at both 12 and 18 months checkup, the average was maintained at 0.863. All of these changes were statistically significant. Although patient scores were statistically much improved at 12 and 18 months post-treatment, due to the fewer number of patients who reached the later time points, reliable data is only available up to six months following treatment, and therefore an assumption on the persistence of the treatment effect is required for later time points. To look at both extremes, assuming that the treatment benefit ended after just six months, additional qualities were 0.045 which means that the ICER would be £90,000 per quality. However, assuming that the treatment effect continued for 43.8 years, the average life expectancy of the patients in this study, then additional qualities were 3.899, meaning the ICER would fall to just £1,000 per quality. Therefore, to meet NICE's requirements for health economics, the effects of treatment would need to persist for 1.5 years. In conclusion, EQ5D results improved with PSSE in adult patients with idiopathic scoliosis. If the treatment effect of the PSSEs persists for only 1.5 years, it is expected to be cost-effective in UK-based adults. Further long-term research is required to start planning for PSSE to become available within national healthcare services. With publication of these results, we hope to highlight that the input of physiotherapy in this patient group should warrant funding. We are aware that there are several limitations to this study, namely lack of a control group, limited long-term follow-up, and no data on cost savings from exercise therapy. These are our references, and thank you for listening.